Hello, so this quick recording, I want to talk about um, something I've been playing with in Flow again. And um, this is the latest one. I just, uh, it was last month about a few minutes ago. Um, and uh, this one, I renamed it to Recurring Events and Actionable Messages. And I just want to go in and have a look. So if I show you, there's actually one that's running right now. It's still running. Uh, that's because Flow has this concept of asynchronous actions where similar to a proofful where uh, Flow is, is essentially paused. It's waiting for the user to do something. Uh, I ran it a few times last night as a, as a test when I was building this. So the scenario of this Flow, and uh, as I'm dropping in, I'll just start talking about this scenario. The scenario of this flow really is that uh, my day job is a consultant. I do uh, consulting work. And um, and one of the things I need to do at the end of every week is to make sure all my timesheets are correct. And that ensures, you know, I get paid and invoices can get sent on time, uh, which keeps the clients happy, keeps everybody happy. Really, the if you don't do your time as a consultant, you know it just blocks everything down the road. Um, but it is somewhat of a drag. Like you know, it is not something you do as your main job. So it is something that you find, hey, this is very distracting. So um, the idea with this flow is that I have uh, in my calendar uh, all day events that describes. Uh, all day events such as this one uh, that describes the client I will be at. So it's here, uh, it says H1. In fact, so this is the th sequence of this flow. I'm recurring. I'm using the new, um, the trigger is a timer. So this is the recurrence timer. Uh, I'm using the new, new advanced mode, which lets me pick the time zone, which is an awesome addition. Uh, the frequency is so the once a day. It should really exclude the weekends. I could do that in one of the expressions. Um, and then you get this choice where you can say, I want to happen every hour. So even, even if you want to happen twice, say 10 and 11 a.m. For me, about 11 a.m. is when I want this workflow to run. What it's going to do, and uh, uh, this is where I quickly calculate the variable. And let me just, I find this box really small to read, so I usually copy it out. Add a comment and just paste it in here. That keeps it really nice, easy to read. Um, so, with the new updates to uh, the expression functions for time, for the time uh, data type, we can now take, you know, UTC now give us ticks. Uh, which is give us a UTC time, and then you, we now have functions like confer from UTC that we can use to confer to our Australian time zone. Uh, so that gives us an Australian time. We can then use start the date that sets the time component of the day time to basically now. So basically, I get the beginning of today. I then call get calendar events, and I want to have today, and then end basically add one day to today. So between the beginning of today and the beginning of tomorrow, I'm looking for calendar. And this calendar comes out of my uh, my actual company calendar. So one of the benefits of Flow in that it's it's completely a, it's an external uh, uh, workflow system, so it could connect to different systems. My Flow is actually running in my personal account, but it's able to reach into uh, my calendar that's inside my corporate account. My kid just walks by, which is fine. <laughs> hello. Say hello. Hi. Uh, I'm back again. Hi. All right, go away. Okay. <laughs> um, now, this uh, query will actually return us a array of different events. So there could be zero or more events. Uh, typically, you will see that um, when you have an array, what you end up doing then is you go into a for each. You'll be looping through all the events. For me, um, I'm really trying to just simplify it. I don't really like big 
crazy looking boxes so what I'm doing is I'm using one of the expression functions called first so of the array which is the output of this guy um, I just want the first element so give, up, give me the first element and I'm after the subject of uh, which is the subject right the subject of the event in my calendar event so that becomes the, the, the event okay and uh, if you remember from my calendar the event is really just the client just the uh, company that I'm working for the, their initials uh, and I often use compose as an action to just log. I, I treat this as a log history. I, compose could be used to build complex multi-lined uh, JSONs, but I generally use compose like I do it with a log, like a log history. Then uh, this is the option. This is the action that actually creates these actionable messages, and basically send email with options. You specify the options that you want. So thanks edit, delete, your time should just feel, I actually write this little, you know, this is the bot message. I think I understand what client ID means, and I have done your time sheets for you. <laughs> and I have these three options. Now, this particular action is where uh, earlier we see this workflow is still running. Basically, it sent me this email, and then it's waiting. Uh, let me continue. Uh, then I'm actually building some URL so I'm using the let me take this and put that in here so this is to do with our company SharePoint um, uh, environment uh, those client IDs like HY gets attached to the URL so under my company's uh, SharePoint gurus slash site slash client slash client ID so that's actually where the URL of the site is um, and then I also was going to set up the list name. I haven't actually done that yet. And this, this next bit, um, this, let me collapse these. Let me collapse that. So the, uh, send email with act options. When a user chooses an option, this flow continues. And we end up on this switch. So this selected option is the result of what the user selected here. And you could say, okay, if it's added, then what I really want to do is uh, send the users a, a reply message and say, oh, okay, um, here's a link to the timesheet uh, site, uh, the timesheet list on that site. So uh, if the user were to click that, they get read that, they, they get taken over to the uh, SharePoint timesheet list. Um, if I say thanks, then uh, it actually just goes and create creates it. So the email is slightly wrong. It hasn't created it yet. It, it's it's waiting to prefill it for me. So if I click yes, it will actually go and create it. And uh, if I do nothing, then actually, which is what the delay is, it actually doesn't do anything. Okay, and that goes and creates an item, pretends I did eight hours for that client. It will enter that timesheet for me. So uh, I think I add some comments. So let me just update that. Let that finish and come back. So just to show you one that's currently running. So you see that it's ran. It's it's picked up my client uh, and it's basically waiting. You know, it's waiting for my input. So if I switch over to my email, you'll see, hey, that's that email that was sent. And uh, this is the typical message that is sent. Uh, so the flow has sent this actionable message to me, and it say, hey, I think I understand what HY means, and I'm just incorrect. I'm about to do your timesheets for you. If I hit thanks, it will continue and create an item. If I hit edit, it should take me, it will actually, uh, it, it needs to actually send me a reply and say, hey, uh, here's a URL to the timesheet that you can do yourself. Um, this really should say do nothing because I've changed the way I've designed the flow. So it doesn't delete, it doesn't create version and delete later now. It just doesn't do anything. But if I hit thanks, I have to hit here. It says, yep, it's done. 
and then if you come back here you'll see it the, the flow start running and it's run through and it's taken uh it's well it's about to do the create and it's gone off and added the entry into my timesheet app so let's send that right into timesheet so i've actually just logged eight hours against my client on a saturday uh, i'm actually have to go and delete that um, but that I think is probably uh, a good wrap for this little quick demo um, Uses the recurrence events the new time elements in recurrence events so you can see uh, some of the nicer ways you could do um, Funny I say run at 11 run at 11.40 anyway um, Yes, yeah, so uh, Could run different recurrence events uh, how to fetch a calendar out of a different system uh, send email with options that's your actionable messages and then how to use a switch to basically handle your different cases uh, as they wrap up so uh, let me know what you think of this recording I'm basically trying to get through all the little test samples that I find really interesting uh, because there was no way I could catch up in writing our blog post for each one of these so, thank you. Bye.